going to do to combat this check engine light is we're going to break out the trusty all tail. Okay, we have the all tail now plugged into the OBD2 port. And we're going to go to read codes. So as you can see, it is P0420 catalyst system efficiency efficiency below threshold. So what that's going to mean is that the catalyst, that the computer in the car thinks that the catalytic converter is not doing its job. And that can be caused by either a, a bad catalytic converter or it can be caused by bad uh, O2 sensors. I'm going to get up under the car and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. So what I'm going to do is get up, have the car up a little bit supported on the jack stand. I'm going to show you the catalytic converter where the O2 sensors are. All right, so here, this is the catalytic converter on this car, and this is why they're so easily stolen off this vehicle because you basically don't even have to jack the car up to get under it, and they just cut these things right off. So what we're looking at here, in the front you have an O2 sensor, and in the back you have an O2 sensor. This one is measuring the air going into the catalytic converter, and this is measuring what's coming out, so it determines how good a job the catalyst inside the catalytic converter is doing. He's taking the pollutants out of it, and if the computer is getting a reading from both of these O2 sensors that's similar, it assumes that the catalytic converter is bad. You don't know that for sure. It could be a bad O2 sensor. So what I'm going to do is a hack where I'm going to take the back O2 sensor out and I'm going to install what's known as a spark plug defouler or non-fouler. And I'm going to show you on the bench what I'm talking about and explain exactly what it is. All right, this here is called a spark plug defouler or non-fouler. And what they're designed to do is you're supposed to put your spark plug in uh, this end, of course, put it into your head, and it, it pulls the uh, end of this spark plug out of the combustion chamber, and it supposedly helps it keeps it, it keeps it from getting a buildup on it. Uh, not exactly sure how well that works or doesn't work. I've seen mixed things about it. But what I've done is I purchased a set of these. I've already tried these before in a different vehicle, and it didn't work. So we're going to try it on this one and see if I get some better results. They're very inexpensive. You get them at AutoZone, O'Reilly's, any place like that. And when you first get them, the end of these it has a much smaller hole so what you do is take a half inch drill bit and you just drill that out wider and what I'm going to do is take the rear O2 sensor out of the vehicle I'm going to put it into this end and then put the whole assembly back into the catalytic converter like that so what it's going to do is pull the probe for the end of the, cal uh, the O2 sensor out of the stream a little bit and then that way you make sure that you're getting two different readings at the O2 sensor. Whoa there, Sparky. Hold on just one second. You should know that if you live in the United States, that if you do anything to tamper with or bypass the factory installed emission system on your vehicle, you are in violation of federal law and you're subject to a fine if you get caught doing it. If you take your car to an inspection station with it modified like this, most likely they're going to catch that you have done it and they're going to send you on your way. This video is for testing and informational purposes only. We're doing this just for fun. I am going to take all of that off the car and I'm going to end up buying a new catalytic converter like you should do as well if you're having this problem. Let's get back to the video. All right, for the uh, first part of this, I'm going to follow the wire back from the rear O2 sensor and I've already disconnected it and just pull it off. It's one of these that you just squeeze and pull. With that removed, I'm ready to remove the O2 sensor. All right, I have this tool. Hopefully, I'm not going to have any trouble getting this off. It has a gap in it for this. Uh, wire that comes out of the back. You don't really need this, but it just makes it a little easier. You can probably get it with a, I think it's a seven, seven, eight inch wrench. And I am back with a seven, eight inch wrench. Did not have enough pull. Let's see if I can get it with this. And we're loose. All right, back up on the bench. I did have to open that up to half an inch. The, where I had it before was too small. Now just take your time, use some oil, uh, cobalt drill bit if you have it. That's the best thing to go. So, again, all it's going to do is screw in like this. And then we're going to tighten that up. And then we're going to reinstall it in the car just like that. As you can see, the probe no longer ex will not extend into the catalytic converter anymore. So that's going to change the readings it's going to be doing. All right, I'm about to lose my light here. So all we're going to do again, we're going to thread that back in. Tighten the defiler or non fouler, whatever you want to call it, up first. 
And then we're going to do the same for the O2 sensor on the back of the defiler. All right. I'm going to just plug it back in. All right, let's go back up top. All right, we're back in the cab of the truck, and what I could do now is clear these codes out and then just wait to see if it comes back. The vehicle does do a test of the catalyst system, and it only occurs at highway speed. You can actually watch it if you have a, a, a nice enough code reader like this one here. And basically, you have to run the car at highway speed for about 15 minutes. It has to get it fully up to temperature, and then it does its test. If it passes the test, it, it should clear the code out itself. If it doesn't pass the test, it probably would, would shoot another temporary in. I'm not exactly sure about that part. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to clear the codes. I'm just going to drive the car, and I'm going to see what happens. Okay, I did uh, drive the car, and it should have run the cycle by now to test for that code again. And I noticed that the temporary code is gone, but the uh, permanent code was still there. So what I've done is reset the... Uh, the light it just erased the code and I'm going to drive it through its cycle again and see if the light comes back on. Be back and let you know how it went. So did it work? No, it didn't work. Of course it didn't work. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I tried this before and it did not work. This is like Lucy holding the football for Charlie Brown. He thinks he's going to actually kick it this time. So as you can see, don't waste your time with this. It's illegal, it's probably not gonna work, and it's a waste of time. Fix your car right the first time so you don't have to go back and fix it again. So as always, I appreciate you visiting with me today. Please be sure to check out some of my other videos and consider subscribing to the channel, that would be great. So that brings us to the end of another one. I'll see you next week.